Happy New Year and good afternoon, friends and family. I thought I'd take you on a tour of Aqua Flora Farms, LLC today. It's a new year. It's a great day here in North Carolina, in the Piedmont. And we're just gonna take a little walk around the property and show you what's going on here. Or as I heard other people say, what's growing on here? Right now, it's winter, so there isn't much. Let's take a walk. Let's turn you around. So I thought I'd start with the back property. We have seven acres here. We moved here, oh, about five years ago. And been clearing land a little bit and planting uh, fruits and nuts and berries and learning lots about farming life starting from zero right in front of you we have some hardy kiwi that I planted and that'll be fruiting this year I believe here we got some blueberries a little blueberry patch a little 30 odd blueberry plants of various kinds uh, we'll be adding to that this year as well And down the road, we got some mature Concord grapes, white and purple, as it were. And here we got uh, some Kiowa giant black raspberries that um, when I first moved here, there was a plant in a cracked bucket on the corner of the shop. It's grown into the ground and I keep taken from that little cluster and putting them out here. It's the gift that keeps on giving. And we'll be doing more of that this year as well. And coming up straight ahead, we got the old timey persimmon tree. And that uh, is one of three or four on the property. And we continue out to the back. Nothing going on out here yet as far as planting and fruits and nuts and berries. There's a lot of wild stuff going here. I cleared this whole hill right here that we're looking down. We've got a lot of milkweed down there. I'm letting that spread across this hill. The monarchs had a small stake here when we first moved here now they they keep coming back they, they know the milkweeds all on this hill and like I said we're spreading it out when I first moved here this little area here where the there's a small power line running through but this area here right there was all grown in as well the power company came in on the second year and cleared it out for me. It was all grown in from where my, my hat is down to those, that rusty pile of a Model A Ford back there. And uh, we've kept it clean since. And if you listen, right up on that branch, a little woodpecker looks like a downy. And that tree happens to be a black walnut tree. You don't know I'm here. Anyway, moving on. This little thing here is a, a runoff area. Comes from that direction through the thicket. And I made this little permanent crossing here, put a couple of drainage pipes in. on this I'll probably have to put some more in by the looks of this area here I have thrown some chips down and over the past few days well 36 hours we had four inches of rain and an inch of snow and as you can see it's taken up some of the wood chips and they ran off down there so we're gonna have to fix this and build this up a little more and probably add another drainage pipe in Cut 
some trails in here too. This is going up to the left side of the property borderline, and uh, this is all mine. I don't know if you can see in the distance the peak of that barn. That's all. That's the neighbor's barn there. So that's where our property goes to. It runs up the hill here from the neighbor's barn. And we're coming up on the line. This is a row of trees in front of me. And the property line runs down that way. Now this back hill wasn't really that overgrown. I did clear it some. But we keep it clear now. So we don't get a bunch of trees growing up. But I did find an interesting thing my first summer here. Because we moved in in September. We, sent, we found some passion flowers. And I don't know if they're native or not for this area, but uh, I started picking them up and bringing them up front and planting them. I'm going to keep doing that and letting them spread up front. They're the beehives. So we'll, uh, we've gotten some already. I got some growing up there. We've gotten several passion fruits, which come from passion flower plants. So. They're quite yummy. If you never had them, you ought to try them one of these days. And so down here we got my little campground, which uh, built a little fire pit. We'll go down there, I guess. Overlooking my neighbor through the woods. Over the river and through the woods neighbors. Little farm, horse farm. Here's my little fire pit. Guess we keep it stocked with wood. Gotta be splitting that pretty soon. I also picked up some prickly pear cactus off the side of the road. The guy let me take some. And I stuck them in on the hill here. And they're starting to take. Hopefully we'll have a couple of big clusters. Coming up in the future, and we'll just go back up the hill here now and take a walk around the perimeter. Yeah, this whole area is got plenty of passion flower growing here. Problem is, I let let it grow and the weeds grow with it, so that's why I transferred it up front. So I keep keep things in check but we still come through here and pick pick up some passion flower as we're walking the property we try to walk the perimeter every night gives us some exercise see what's going on catch a little wildlife here and there this is my back corner right here a little slanted tree here. I'm taking a turn down the back line, which runs to the little creek or branch, as they call it down here in North Carolina. I'll float in and out of my Massachusetts, North Carolina accent as we go. You never know what I'll be doing. There's also some um, native muscadine grows wild all over the place down here along the edge of the paths that me and my wife Ann walk. Yeah, we usually see deer coming through here. I scared a big buck one time, jumping out in front of me. I don't know why he didn't hear me coming. But I startled him and he startled me. But now we're at the little branches right there. And amongst the thicket. We still got a little snow left from yesterday's one inch that we got. A little branch there. This little tree here is another native persimmon right in front of us. 
that I cleared this area out. This is all overgrown here too. I cleared it along the river right here, a little creek. Yep. Well, yesterday this little creek was full of leaves. Now it's, you can actually see the sand again in some areas. It's cleaned out. I'm putting wood chips down here to help with the erosion. I'm going to be clearing out all these little saplings. Uh, some of them make good walking sticks. Just sort of get some light, more light down here, so get some grass growing or something down here. Stop with the erosion. Another little runoff going back to my little crossing. That we passed. Got some good sized trees down there. That's about a 36 inch. Tulip poplar tree. Big one. <clears throat> Here's another little crossing I put in to get my tractor back here, my little tractor. This uh, little opening here was already here. I just couldn't see it till I cleared the hill. And the little crossing here was all overgrown on the other side so I didn't even know but this was this little pass here was all clear still because it's in the shade. Here's some more remnants of the model A's that were left by the original owners of the property who happened to be my neighbors. Um, their grandmother owned it and they got it and sold it to someone else before we bought it. But that was their little remnants of their model A left in the field there and in the creek here they just parked them there's some more down there and then back up to the hill i cleared probably get some sunflowers back there too this year that's just a single wide mobile that was left on the property. They must have had some animals at some point. There was some hay and stuff in there. Although I've since gutted it, they had left it with, intact with all the sheetrock and stuff and I gutted it and those are like barn doors there on the side. There was some hay in there like I said so they probably uh, had some goats or something or chickens, I don't know. Probably goats. That little clump there is muscadine which I brought back here was growing wild in front of my porch. So I stuck it back here and I'm going to build a trellis for it at some point. And this is stuff I take it off the hill there that I cleared. Slowly walk rotten into the ground. Right? This land used to be mostly just cow pasture. It's all fenced in with barbed wire and uh, the old, big old beech tree on the property. It's about a 40 inch or more tree. And we got some um, old farm equipment here. I think it was like a power takeoff. I tried to pull it out, but the roots are growing in all around it. Probably would work if I could get it out. Not too rusty. Somebody has just my. So this is the back side of that mobile home, and my property just goes down there to the creek. That and then it runs up, runs up this line here right side as you're looking at it from the street. Yeah, it's uh, my property's kind of flat, so we got the hills in the back. The front is all flat, pretty good. But as they got it, call it down here, we got the, the holler, which that drops down about 60 feet right there. Or more, you know, 60.
We're about 730 above sea level over here. And 600 miles west of Massachusetts where I came from. Ish. And this, um, that tree, this small one there, and that one, and that one, and there's a little one right there. That, uh, they're black walnuts. I get get a few of those every year. And I forgot to mention up there, next to that white shed in the yonder, is a cedar and another black walnut tree. And uh, that's the shop building up there. And sitting alongside that, there's two clusters of fig uh, bushes, trees, more like bushes. I guess you can turn them into trees if you husband them right, but I've been taking from there and starting to spread them up in the front property, which we're heading to now. So I just want to take a minute to talk a little bit about what I've been learning about agriculture over the past six months. And, um, well, big agriculture in general has done a great job at growing a lot of plants really fast and getting them out to the world. But unfortunately, in that process, they've degraded the soils and the plants, although they look great, they don't have anything in them um, that's worth our eating very much keeps us alive but it doesn't do the best it can and there's a whole science behind the um, plant health and what it does to our health and how you can measure the, the plant health it's called the BRICS system B-R-I-X uh, system and also in the agricultural field um, there's been a, a lot of uh, learning going on and various people have discovered many things about soil health and biology and how it relates to the plants and the symbiotic relationship between the soil and the plants and you know we went from the, this big ag format to people starting to realize that well we got to stop using pesticides and, and adding chemicals to everything and so we got into organic um, farming as a model and uh, that incorporated also uh, cover cropping, uh, making sure your fields are never bare because you always need something growing in the soil for it to be healthy. And then they, uh, they went to re regenerative farming where you do those practices of stopping the chemicals and the pesticides and keeping your crops covered and rotating your crops as well, which regenerates, helps to start regenerating the soil. And then from regenerative to, to uh, sustainable meaning you make that system sustainable and figure out how to keep your soil healthy from sustainable it went into permaculture um, and that's another system the one of the latest that uh, incorporates all your your ecosystem and your your property's um, general layout and health of the total ecosystem of your property um, and along with that, uh, food forest popped into the, the scene where that's not so much for an agricultural thing, although it can be on a modified scale adaptable to larger farming operations, um, but it's, it's generally for more homestead stuff. So we'll, we can talk about that down the road in future videos, so let's just go on and finish this tour. So now we're in the front of the property. We got um, pecan trees up here. That's one right there. That's another one. That's one right there. And these were here obviously before I got here. Uh, there were some more apple trees, but they've since gone. That's a remnant of an apple tree. I'm just letting it grow. Maybe it'll put out again. I don't know. The first summer we moved here, we had quite a drought condition. 
and um, a lot of the trees, all the bark cracked and split and just did a number on them, so we lost a lot. That's a pear tree. Not sure which brand, uh, probably got it written down somewhere. That's another pecan tree right there. And this is a uh, Asian persimmon tree. The name escapes me right now. But uh, that's seen better days too. That drought affected it quite a bit. We lost a few limbs. Some major limbs that had to, that broke off. But it's bouncing back. We've got new growth coming out the bottom. I don't know how much longer I'll, it'll, it'll last. But it keeps putting out so far. We've got a lot of persimmons out of this one. And these are very different from the native persimmons. They're, these ones are, the native persimmons are about golf ball size. These ones are about the size of a good peach. And they're also orange. The native persimmons are tan to brown. And there's a little bit of a different flavor. These, this Asian persimmon is um, just, I call it candy on a tree. It's just pure sweet. And this is uh, a cherry tree, one of several that we have here. And this is another, um, this is a Fuyu persimmon that I planted. And that's coming in pretty good. And right here we got a couple of peach trees that my neighbor blessed me with. One there. And one there. And that is a pineapple pear tree. And that puts out some pears. Well, they call them pineapple pears because some of them get close to the size of a pineapple. They're pretty big. I got a pretty big hand and uh, they get probably about, I want to get like four or five inches, about three inches across in there. And over here, my neighbor's dog's barking, but we got a couple clusters of hazelnuts. When I first moved here, there was, you couldn't even see through the base of that cluster. It was so thick with uh, growth of hazelnut uh, branches, but I since thinned them out, which which now is causing uh, more nutrients to get to the nuts, and they're developing a little better each time. That's one, and that's the other. And back here we got a few uh, figs that I transplanted from. A little shop corner there. I had originally had five here, two of them have, uh, haven't made it. This one's still alive. I got three alive up front. We'll, we'll plant some more. There's another one that's doing pretty well. And this is another cherry tree. I got like three, three uh, different types of cherry tree. I think got about nine trees all together. I got some giant ones and some stellar. And here we got some new additions. We got from the last year. We got a banana tree right there. And one across the driveway. I don't know if they're ever the fruit, but they look cool, so I planted them. <laughs> a lot of people plant them. I don't know. I've not, not heard of anyone getting any bananas yet. But, like I said, they look cool, so we'll let them go. And this is uh, another cherry tree right here. That one's the first one I planted. I caught that one and that one. And the next year I got I'm sorry for that. We were interrupted by a phone call. Anyway, so we got the rest this, the second year of living here. And we planted a row of them right there. I think I lost two, I'll know more in the spring. I think the next two coming up are uh, lost. They were from a different vendor. The first ones I got were uh, from one vendor in California, and the second I got. 
Uh, we lost two of those. So. I also have planted some pomegranates. And don't know how well they're going to do. My soil is pretty tough here, so it's kind of clay. Probably got about six inches of topsoil and then clay, so makes it tough for the roots to get in. I suppose if you keep them wet, though, things will grow. We do get quite a bit of rain here. We we probably average in the high 40s every year, inches of rain. It's been warm all last week, but like I said, we got all that rain and we just got some snow. It's turned colder. It's about well, 40 degrees right now. And uh, we're coming up on the hives. That's a, this hive in front here is the one I caught from swarming last year. And that other one in the background is the first one. It's been here for a few years. We just took some honey from the first one. I didn't know it, but I had left the super on, and they had plenty of honey up there. After after the honey flow, I just left it on and got busy with other things and left the bees alone, pretty much. And uh, so they had like four frames of three quarters worth of honey. And so I emptied one frame because uh, it's good stuff. But there, you know, when the sun's out, it's only 40 degrees, but they're. They're flying around a little bit. I don't know what they're getting or doing, but they're flying around. Anyway, so this right here, this little arbor, is uh, where I put started the passion flower. And that's uh, the remnants of the vines right there. A decent amount, we probably have a Two, three dozen passion flowers off of these vines last I mean fruit off of these last season and I'm just gonna I might put like a, a, I don't know, a trellis around the beehives here and let the passion flowers just go out around the, the hive like a fence trellis type thing don't know yet just encompass the bees with passion flower Oh yeah, and there's the, uh, there's the old rain gauge up there, still full, from the past rain event over the last 36 hours and snow. But like I said, that's about almost four inches of rain right there. And that's the property, my house. Yeah, this was a good little find, this little property, and it's got a nice big shop. I'll take you in there. Quick peek. Oh, well, my neighbors just pulled up. I'm going to stop. Well, that was my neighbor from across the street, and uh, she just showed up with some fresh homemade pumpkin bread. So, we can't wait to tap into that. All right. Let's go back to the shop. And that right there is my aquaponics setup, which we'll go to next after I just glance around the shop. That's one of the reasons I came here. Down there. So here's the shop. Yeah, you got to have a shop. You got to be able to do a lot of things yourself and fix things and build things and take care of things. And this is where it all happens. Got my little scooter back there and my little mini tractor, a little trailer, front end loader, and also the backhoe attachment. Very nice to have. All right, moving on to the fish house. So this little fish house I built myself. I had to, 
hire an electrician and a plumber to rough it in. I did the finished plumbing, but I let the electrician do all that work. I can run wire and stuff, but I don't have quite the knowledge to do all the type of wiring. So I just let him run at it. And I just put this greenhouse cover on this uh, shelter here, and uh, that'll be my first. Uh, raft system inside there and we'll be growing shortly for that Still got to tighten this up Get close to the weather and These are the troughs that we'll be putting the plants in it's a floating raft system and uh, You will use like a two inch styrofoam uh, board and cut them into two by four sections and put some slit pots in them and get your plants going in there in the water which will circulate into the fish house. Go take a look at the fish house operation now. Here we are inside the fish house. And these two tanks here are basically glorified aquariums. Um, they're, they're operated as an aquarium, which means it has a filter system going. Because if you don't have a filter system going in your home aquarium, it ain't gonna be pretty. And you also need to uh, circulate the water and keep the air going. But the main thing about aquarium systems is there's no way to get the ammonia out of the water in an aquarium system. So if you have an aquarium at home, you know you have to eventually change the water. So filters help to delay that a little bit. But again, uh, the filter doesn't have the capacity to take out ammonia. So I have these two set up because originally when I was going to do my aquaponics system uh, startup, I had planned on getting mature fish. And then you start the whole thing together, you germinate, get your fish on order, get them all, get the plants growing, get the system started up, get the troughs filled with water and everything, and grab your fish and throw them in, and have your germinated plants and throw them in the troughs. Because the plants uh, have a symbiotic relationship with the fish, in that the f plants can take the ammonia out of the water. And uh, that's why you don't need filters, per se, on an aquaponics system. Now you want to do some sediment settling and different things, and you have to, uh, to, you have to uh, create your um, ecosystem, biological ecosystem, in, in, um, in the operation. And, th and this right here is part of it. This is a settling tank, or radio flow tank. And basically, your water. This is where I'm going to put the fish in this tank here. Once I start the system, and so the water will come out of there, go into here, and down the bottom there, it's gonna that little 90 elbow is pointed slightly down, so that it'll cause circulation, and the sediments will go down to the bottom and stay there. And uh, the rest of the water will be going out the top and out into the system through there. And you uh, have a little drain place there to clean it out once in a while. You clean out the sludge and if you want to hang on to that sludge, throw it in a compost pile or something. Because that's some good stuff right there. And uh, so there's the outline going into the bank of the pipes going out to the greenhouse. Yeah. I'll just give you a little panorama of the greenhouse. We got the southern side. And I obviously planned for the winter uh, sun. That's the southern bank the windows and the door there. And then that's the eastern bank, so I get the sun coming up through there. And right there, you're looking at my first plants that I germinated. I've uh, been in here a little too long, but for various reasons we haven't been able to start the system, but we're just about ready to do that. Uh, 
So I'm gonna have to be getting going on the journey. And like I said, these guys have been here a little too long and they're not getting enough sun in here and they're not getting the full benefits of what they would in the aquaponics system because this is just a germination table. There's no circulating water here. And so I just keep, keep it uh, dumping some fish water in there from the, from the tanks. But like I said, they'll, they're going to do a little better when they get out into the full sun and get the water circulating direct in the aquaponic system. So anyway, this is it. Little white board. Just to utilize and keep track of things. It was nice because when I bought this property, it had a separate set of utilities and uh, a separate ses septic system for this uh, side of the operation here. So I just remembered I wanted to show you the fish. Um, I raised these fish from little fingerlings. They're about three quarters of an inch long. And now they're about you know, some of the eight, nine inches. Not sure of their weight. Those two pots in there are six inch uh, pottery pots. So that's the fish that I'll put into the other tank to um, when I start the system up in a couple weeks. So I'm just going to throw them a little food because it's feeding time and then we'll wrap this thing up. Here's the food. Get brave in a minute, start eating. Some of them are floating and some of them are sinkers. Got about 21 fish left out of the batch that I raised. Okay. We'll just wrap this up now. So that's a complete tour of my property and what's going on here. It's a new year. It's a new beginning. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Hope you enjoyed it. God bless. See you next time.